This interview is for the Neighborhoods of Newport Oral History Project of the Newport, Rhode Island Historical Society. The interviewer is Jocelyn Birdso. The narrator is Mrs. Esther Lawson Prince. And the interview is taking place at Mrs. Prince Home, 10 Bayview Avenue, Newport, on April 5, 1984. Uh, you mentioned that you were born in Newport. Yes, on Meeting Street. Now, Meeting Street then is what... Um, well, still uh, Meeting Street now, and it's uh, where the y Na Army and Navy YMCA is. It wasn't there then. No, there were private homes. How did your parents happen to be here? How did they happen well, to be in Newport? Well, uh, of course, I think the reason my father came to the United States was that the young men left Sweden before they were 21 because they had to go in the service for three years, and they liked to escape from that. So he was Swedish? Oh, yes, and my mother also. And she came here to visit her sister, and she met my father, and of course... So they weren't married before they came. Oh, no. Two no. Swedish people met each other yeah. halfway around the world. I know. <laughs> and what was your father's occupation when he was here? Well, he was a secretary for a Reverend Green. And uh, then... He was a manager for a wholesale fruit and produce. These were new jobs then that he got after he yes, came, not oh, based yes. on any particular no, training or education no, in Sweden. No. And, and uh, so when we, after I was born, they had to move from Meeting Street because of getting of the baby carriage. They couldn't go up to the second floor, there was no place for it. So they moved to Newport Avenue. And from Newport Avenue, we moved to Broadway, about opposite where the uh, high school is now. And uh, we lived over my father's store. There were all homes there, and where the high school from the Townsend Industrial School up to Mann Avenue were all private homes. Doesn't look much like that now, does no, it? No, indeed it doesn't. You were the oldest one? I was the oldest. And I had a brother who became a doctor. And during the Second World War, he went with the Rhode Island unit to uh, the Burma, India area, and he was over there for three years, and he was with, met Lord Mountbatten, which who he said was a marvelous person. I think everybody who had any contact with Lord Mountbatten yes. really um, admired him. Yeah. And the strange part of it was that uh, while he was in Providence, they had this orderly. And my brother knew that he wasn't the ordinary type. And while he was there in India, he met this man who was the orderly's brother. And for some reason, he'd left home. And my brother you know, asked him about it, says, oh, I wish my mother had only known that because we always wondered where he was. And that's something. So that, that is something. Yes. And he had a lot of Chinese troops under mm -hmm. him. Then you have two sisters? Yes, a sister. Edith and Edith. the other one is Louise. Louise Edith, I... uh, Edith Livesey and Louise Goodell. And Lizzie is spelled L-I-V-E-S-E-Y. -E -E and Goodell is G-O-O-D-E-L-L. -L. 
And you all grew up then on Broadway. Right, yes. And then we later went out to Channing Street because they were starting to, you know, do business creeping in and all. What school was there in the area then that you all went to? Uh, Calvert and Cranston Oh, that's school. still there. there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it's entirely different. Now there are two schools together. Mm -hmm. But when I went there, there was the Calvert School was separate, and then the Cranston School was separate. Did you like school? Yes, you feel I, suppose, <laughs> I suppose I did. <laughs> Had to go anyway, so... Um, well, I think a lot of the problems with education today probably weren't hadn't surfaced then. People just went to wherever the local school was, sure. and you didn't think yes. too much about it. No. You brought home report cards that our parents looked at and had to sign, and we bring them back. <laughs> I guess report cards have always been part of the life yes. of the school. Um, with the rural area, the way these houses all were... Um, where did you play? Where was the area that uh, Well, we, we had a nice yard in the back mm -hmm. there. Very nice yard on Broadway. And the neighborhood children all came over. Oh, play. And, and I often wonder, when I went to Calvert School, we always went down Broadway on the left-hand side. And, of course, I lived on the right-hand side of Broadway. And especially on rainy days, there would be Paul Wilkes and Henry Wheeler and Henry Bowler, whose father was a postmaster, and Donald Thurston, and he was called Dippy Thurston. And they would have an umbrella, and they'd hook it round our legs. Boys but, have always been exactly yeah. the same but, way. But why? We went down on the left-hand side when we could have crossed over. Maybe you enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't know. A um, little attention, even if it's not exactly what you choose, is better than no attention from yeah. the boys. And yeah. there was at Lake's Corner. There's a, a printing place there at Corner. Well, there was S.S. Thompson's grocery store there. And right next door to it was S.S. Thompson's candy store. Same family. Same family. They owned it. And uh, we would, oh, if you had a five cents, you had a crowd around with you. But not enough to buy for yourself and share. Sure. Why, we, as we, we got these little licorice candies, about that long, little black babies, and you'd get ten for a cent. Was it a congenial neighborhood, or was it sort of divided into cliques and ethnic groups? Well, I don't know. I, I, I don't recall anything like that. And, of course... We never had very much money for candy, but we had fruit, that being father's business. And we'd, we'd trade a pear or a peach or a banana for some candy. <laughs> Barter has always been yeah. part of the economy. <laughs> what were your favorite recreations for having fun? What did you enjoy doing most? Oh, well, I don't know. I like to dance. Were there? And then we had parties of all kinds, and you'd have surprise parties. You'd uh, someone would ask your mother if they could come to the house that day, and we'd have a party. Were the dances organized with a list that you had to be on in order to get invited, or were they much more informal? Oh, well, they were informal. During the First World War, they had the boys all lived in town because there were no barracks, but there weren't enough barracks, and so they asked the fa private families if they would open their homes to the boys. And every Saturday afternoon, they 
had a dance over at the uh, training station. And I don't remember where we met, but they had called your parents to see if you could go. And we went over on the trolleys. And you had to come back, too, with the person. And then Sunday, Saturday night, the different churches had dancers. And you you had a tag with your name on it, and the boys had. And they started out with the John Paul Jones, and so then they stopped and you danced with whoever it was there. And you mentioned the various churches. Was your family Episcopal in Sweden? They're yes, well, it was Lutheran. a, well, well, they're Lutherans, but of course, that they all came well, from the Church of Rome. You see, they started, and then different ones broke off. The Greek Church broke away from it, and the Lutheran Church broke away from it. The Roman Church, and then the Church of England, too. So you all wound up at Trinity. Oh, yes, the, we went to Trinity. Having explored around and tried other ones, or was we that always, just always the... Went there. We always went to Trinity. Yes. And you mentioned who was your Sunday school teacher? Oh, May Round, not May Rounds, Catherine Manchester. May Rounds was my... Uh, weekday school teacher. And she lived in this apartment, she and her mother. In this, here, where you're living now? Yes. Then, as you grew up, um, you went to high school yes. in Newport. Then did you go to college? No, I didn't, no. How did you happen to meet your husband? Was he a Newporter? No, he wasn't. He was here in the service. So, during the First World War? Yes. Where did he come from? From uh, Boston. So then you were married and mm-hmm. and went back to his area, yes. to Boston. And you were there for... Well, I was uh, in Boston for 44 years. Mm-hmm. And then came back to yeah. Newport. And did you have children? No, no family. But you have nieces and nephews all yeah, over the place. Well, I see these yeah. photographs. These were your sisters and your brothers? That's children? my brother's uh, grandchild. And uh, he's going to be christened in Trinity Church the 29th of April. You must be a family that has belonged to Trinity just about as long as any family that's there now. Well, I suppose so. <laughs> yes, well... Uh, my nephew wanted him, to, uh, the Richard, to be baptized there because his grandfather was baptized there, and of course his, his great grandmother and great grandfather were members of Trinity. And before you were married and lived on Broadway, was there a feeling of neighborhood about that area, or did you feel more? As if you lived in the whole of Newport. Well, I don't know. I never gave it much thought. No, no, never people thought who, much about it. People who lived in the Point area, I know, yeah. had a oh, very yes. cohesive neighborhood feeling. And some of the people in the K. Catherine Old Beach area mm. had a neighborhood feeling there. Um, but I guess you were sort of in the dividing line in the middle. I don't know. <laughs> Just didn't have the close neighborhood feeling. Did you go to the beach very much? Oh, yes. From, that was very popular recreation. Oh, that was popular. It was, oh, the beach was lovely then. Much nicer than it is now, oh. I guess. Oh, of course, it was all swept down in the 1938 hurricane. No, the, uh, the beach... And all things went over into the big pond, the bathhouses. I guess that hurricane really did a lot of damage, and the beach is only one of the things that has not recovered. Oh, yes. yes, my sister was down there swimming that morning. 
Yeah. The morning of the hurricane. The morning yes. of the hurricane. It's beautiful. Uh, it was lovely, but what we noticed as uh, we went in, that the tide seemed to sweep us up towards the cliffs. And we spoke about that, Evelyn and I. Yes. And, uh, oh, what was his name? Young man. So, well, isn't this strange to be going up in that direction? Because we never had before. And the taxi took them out to the school and brought them back again in the evening. After the hurricane? No, before. Oh, before? But every day okay. to go to work. Oh. Mm -hmm. See, there, were, there was no transportation then. There was the uh, the trolley car just went as far tell as me the where, Tell me what the trolley car route was. I have not been able to visualize exactly where it ran, except that I know it went to the beach down Memorial Avenue. Where did it start downtown? Well, it started at the square, what they call the parade. Washington Square. Square, Washington Square. And then... Uh, well, also... Oh, yes. No. Oh, down. Now, let me see. How did it go? It didn't go Thames Street, did it? Did it? Yes, it must have gone... Did it go Thames Street, either? Uh, I think so. And then up Levin Street. Would it have gone from the parade oh, down I and think, then to I begin think it? Were, I think, Edith, that it must have gone both ways on Spring Street, didn't it? Yes. And then it would go down Franklin Street. Yes. 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 I don't think, it, no, it wasn't on Thames Street at all. It uh, went along Franklin Street and down to Thames Street. And uh, the boat from Providence would come down and let all these people off. And some of them would uh, walk to the beach, but others would get on the trolley. And oh, they were full of vim and vigor when they <laughs> came in the morning. When they went home at night, they saw them. Drag a little oh. bit draggy. That's a long walk from the waterfront where a boat would have left them all yeah. the way to the beach up the hill. Well, they would the go, they, they went up Levin Street mm -hmm. there. That's where they switched, changed trolleys. And the trolley was a pretty concentrated route then. It it handled the main yes. part of town, but it yes, didn't go it out very no, far. It went down to Morton Park. Do you know where Morton Park is? Mm -hmm. Well, that's where the route ended there. And then it would go out to the Mile Corner, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Because if we if we we got five cents to ride on the trolley to the beach, but often we would save that. We'd walk. Save it to barter fruit and candy with. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, now, your family is all still in Newport. Your sisters are. Where does your brother live? Well, he lives in Providence. Well, he is dead now. Oh. He, he died maybe 11 years this summer. He never was too well after he came back from the service. But to have so much family and have them still yes, in a fairly concentrated well. area is remarkable in mm -hmm. terms of the mobility of society these days. People don't stick around very long. No. You must have enjoyed Newport. Oh, um, yes. If they have stayed. Pretty well. um, what did your husband do when insurance you went back business. to Boston? Insurance business. Insurance. And then you... Uh, Came back. Where did you live? You mentioned after you came back to Newport, living for a while at Hunter Street. Well, I lived when I first came back. I had an apartment on the corner of Mount Vernon and Bull Street. And then when my sister's husband passed away, why well, I went and moved here on Hunter Avenue, just off K Street. 
Oh, yes, because you know where it is. And from Hunter Avenue, if you went down uh, K Street, that was all swamp. Swamp? Swamp land there. You wouldn't believe that, would you? No, it seems too high. The ground seems too high to be swampy. I have a friend who lives on K Street, about four or five streets down from Hunter Avenue, and they had to have their furnace put up on the stilts. Is that the area where Braga Park is now? Mm. Well, that is low. It does mm. get sort of low down there. Did you ever ice skate on the pond over there? Some. It doesn't freeze anymore. No, so. because you know they used to cut ice on the pond there. What well, ice cakes would be that thick. And they had ice houses there. They stored them. I suppose there was sawdust covered with sawdust. I was amazed when I first found out that that was fresh water. I just assumed that the, it was salt, that yeah. it was salt, and that the road was a causeway that had been built across. Right. It was all part of the ocean, but it's always been a separate uh, freshwater pond, yes. I guess. And then the Green Estate. You know where Arnold Avenue is? Yes. Well, that was the Green Estate, and I've forgotten how far up Broadway it went. And that was just one big estate, and then down by Arnold Avenue there, they flooded it, and we used to skate there at night. There's a big white building that has maybe four garage doors in it now, and a cupola on top. Doesn't seem to be any particular reason for a building like that being there. Do you remember what that originally was for? You mean off Broadway? No, it's um, Hunter and Champlin, I think, or Gibbs and Champlin. It's just a block down prairie. It's a great big, it looks as if it might originally have been maybe a town hall or a firehouse. Oh, no, there was never anything like that there. That wasn't the what part of the White House estate, was it, Edith? Well, that could have been. Yes, as long as it was Prairie Avenue and the yes. A Street area. Well, that yeah. must have been part of the White that House was estate. The, uh, See, the White House oh, estate went from Prairie Avenue to Rhode Island Avenue. And probably farther down toward Hunter and Gibbs yes. and Eustace than anything does now that's so many small houses yeah. there now it must have been nice though when you could see the beach and see the lake the pond from there before too many houses were built yeah. entirely you wouldn't believe that we could we could see the water from here from our bedroom windows upstairs well it's called bayview avenue yes. And you would never suspect that you could really see the bay no. from here. And when all the uh, few years ago, when the tall ships were here, they were lighted up and we could see them all night long lighted. From the second floor up here? Yeah. Well, that must have been quite a oh, sight. Oh, it was uh, wonderful. You mentioned... Um, Monday when I was here with changes in Newport, speaking of the harbor and what you could see that you thought building the brick market was a mistake. Oh, I certainly do. What was there before? What was Just, that area like? Well, there were stores on Thames Street and there were all walls. And there, there was some... Uh, some business down the wharf and private homes and long wharf. That, you went down to the New York boat. You'd get the New York boat at the end of long wharf. The Fall River Line boat. Fall River Line boat. And the train would come from Boston to Newport and people would get on the uh, 
New York boat. Yeah. And then there were was a lot of freight unloaded and fish packed in barrels. And they'd be running the men loading the fish onto the New York boat. Must have been fun to go down and watch the boats come in and out. And <laughs> we, the ta- we were and talking to, today about all the saloons that were on Long Walk. Oh, it was perfectly safe to walk along. And Louise said, yes, yeah. she says, you know, and I'd, I'd stop and look in and you'd tell me, come along, don't look in there. <laughs> you were the older one. You should have been taking care of her and not let your little sister <laughs> well, look in the saloon. Well, <laughs> Uh, it, our parents was with us, of course, most of the time. Father had several sisters in New York, and <laughs> they'd come and visit us, and we thought, oh, that was wonderful. And uh, they'd get up, sometimes they'd go up to Fall River instead of getting off the boat here in Newport, because I, it landed here early in the morning. And uh, we were always waiting to see what they'd brought us. Uh, from New York, yeah. <laughs> from the big city. <laughs> remember, uh, they used to re- I remember some beautiful slip petticoats yeah. that they brought us. And Dick, our brother, he got to a suit. A suit. And he used to say after us, Golly, I wish Aunt Jenny and Aunt Augusta would bring me a suit now. <laughs> yeah, he wished it was something else right? when he was little. When he was a little boy, <laughs> well, yes, the, the suit wouldn't have been all that exciting. No. But <laughs> well, we haven't lived in Newport long enough for me to remember what that area was like before the brick market. Yeah. But we did come in on our own boat occasionally, and my feeling is that the area was an awful mess, particularly the Queen Anne Square area now. It looks so much better than with the awful dirty laundry there and all the well, grubby yes, buildings. I, well, as I say, there are things that should, but of course, that was business. And uh, the, pl- uh, the police station was down there on one of the wharves. And the Jamestown Ferry was there. Landed there, and then there were nice stores along there. It was still then very much a shipping-oriented yeah. town, with the main business of the town being on the wharfs of the ships that came in. Yes. And you go away now at different places, and people like to go down on the wharves, like when you go down to uh, Gloucester and and those places. That's what's fun to go down the wharves. There's always Marblehead. That's lovely. There's always been a romance about ships yes. when they come in and when they leave. It's uh, an emotional moment. Always, even the commercial ones, you say, loading fish, unloading fish. The commercial fishing industry in Newport is still very important, I think, but it is not visible. You don't really see you the know, boats they, come in that much. They're trying to make this a tourist place, and the fishermen have got to make a living, and, and I think it should be commercial. You could, you could have both commercial and tourists combined. How do you feel about the general tourist situation with the traffic and the crowding? Do you think it's just got Terrible. out of hand? It's got out of hand. It's got out of hand. And what are they going to do with all these hotels and condominiums? It's going to be, they'll end up by being a ghost town, I think. The very things that have attracted people won't be here anymore, so they'll have all this yeah. facility for tourists, and the tourists will come. Yeah. Of course, now it's the mansions that bring the people. But uh, I think it, it's being overdone. That's my feeling. And and they're greedy, the merchants here. 
They put the prices way up in the summer. And then they don't put them back in the winter? Not, not too much. They do some. I know we had a glass of white wine down at the Black Pearl for lunch yes. not too long ago. And I looked and I thought, well, this is what it was last summer. And I said to the waitress, you haven't reduced this price from last summer, have you? And she said, no, we're not mm -hmm. going to. Mm -hmm. No, well, that's just it. Well, we, we only ever have good Good food at the Black Pearl, but you sit elbow to elbow. That's many, the objection that I have. As to many it. tables as they could possibly get yes. in. And of course, during the summer, you can't get anywhere near it. No. The, uh, when it first opened up the Black Pearl, they didn't have the restaurant at the end. They just, we were just in the little tavern there. And that was really fun. I enjoyed going there. And Is there any restaurant there now that you still like, that you still think has kept the quality and is still fun to go to? Well, let's see. Now, what's the one above the Black Pearl? The Clark Cookhouse? The Clark Cookhouse, I couldn't think of it. Yes, I think that's still good. We like that. Mm. We're going down there for dinner tonight, as a matter of fact. Oh, yes. Yeah. In the different homes. Yes, I think there was probably a lot more socializing oh, in, in the, the private home. Yes, oh, there yes. was. Entertainment was much more home-centered. Yes. Your sisters, uh, Edith has stayed in Newport. Yeah. Right. You have lived here always. What did your husband do? He worked in the Goodnick Bank on the corner of Green Street and Thames Street. And Louise? Louise? Well, uh, I've been married twice. I lost my first husband, and he worked in the bank. <laughs> well, in fact, both families were friends, and, yeah. and Edith lost her husband, and Charlie lost his, oh, Maybe. that no, that was it, yeah, well, you lost your husband, and then, when you remember, oh, it was the, uh, yeah, How'd it go now? That twisted. Well, um, I've well, there were a uh, child, your second husband, second husband. He was in the banking business also, and he yeah. lost his wife, and Edith lost her husband. <laughs> so then they both did. They joined up. up and they joined two up. Pairs. <laughs> well, that was very convenient. Yes. And then what about Louise's husband? Well, he was, he uh, a, no, he wasn't in the service, was he? No. Well, well not listen. when she married him. I guess Ed must have been in the service. Yes, he was a civilian employee over at the station. A civilian and employee at the Navy died. base. Yes, and that, then... He died, and then she married Mr. Goodell, and <laughs> he had been a uh, serviceman also, but a civilian. With the Navy base here so influential and so busy and employing yeah. so many people, you really didn't get all that much involved with it as mm -hmm. a Navy family, no, really, did no. you? No, no. So there, there are other people and other things going on oh, in Newport yes. besides the Navy. <laughs> this is the second interview for the neighborhoods of Newport 
oral history project with Mrs. Prince. It's taking place at her home on April 9th, 1984. Well, I think a good place to begin today is with those wonderful pictures that you showed me in that trolley book. It really gives an idea of where the trolley went. I had no idea it went all the way to Fall River. Oh, yes. How much did it cost to ride all the way out there? Oh. Do you remember? No, I don't remember, but the fare was a notch because the local fare here was five cents. Imagine that. <laughs> did you ride out there very much to Fall River? For Fall River? No, not too much. And then there was island. You'd go, before you got, you went out to East Main Road, and then you'd go down the hill to Island Park, and that was a, well, I guess it was both a summer place, cottages, you know, and that was swept away during the 1938 hurricane. Well, I haven't heard about the damage out there because I've been talking mostly about Newport. Yes. But that island park, that's a very low area. That oh, would be yes, vulnerable to yes. a storm. And uh, on the right-hand side of the water was, it just swept all those houses away. And it's all been built up and it's the same thing will happen way. again. Sure. And then the trolley the other direction, you say, went to Providence. Pro and Providence. I don't know just how far out that went, whether that went West Main Road or not, because we crossed through the fields part of the way. No, I guess it went out East Main Road and then crossed through the fields to get to Bristol Ferry. And then you took the ferry across, across. before the bridge, before Mount Hope Bridge was oh, built. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then in Bristol, you got the steam car there and took you right up to Providence, went up through Warren, and uh, oh, I can't remember just how they go, different Barrington. And with those pictures of it all open on the sides, it would have been a lovely ride oh, in, the in the summer, just, just something to do to go to for a trolley <laughs> ride. Um, then you said last time that you met your husband during World War One yeah. when he was. What was his job here during the war? Was he out at the torpedo station? No, he was with an, uh, on the uh, naval base. Oh, yeah. what what was Newport like during the First World War? Was it like an armed camp, or was it mostly civilian no, activity but, still? Well, there were no barracks built, so they asked the uh, townspeople to take the boys into their homes. And they lived there until they could get barracks built for them. So the town really didn't have the feeling of um, being a wartime economy, no. wartime encampment? I don't think so. Was there a lot of uh, you know, volunteer activity and oh, yes, uh, Red Cross there. and things? Were people apt to ask you, don't you know there's a war on the way they did in World War II? Well, so long ago, I really don't remember. <laughs> but then your husband was here at the Navy base for the whole war, and then you went back to yeah. um, Boston. Were you here during Prohibition? Part of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll never forget when the uh, the Saturday that there was the probation probation went into effect. My goodness, they people were hurrying into the liquor stores to <laughs> stock up enough to last them the rest of their lives. Yeah. <laughs> Do you? How do you think? the effect was on Newport. Was it a good thing generally or a bad thing for Newport? Well, I don't know that I thought much about it at that time. You weren't aware of a lot of gangster 
activity. Oh, no. The rum runners who well, are we, off the... Well, I think in. they came in later. Mm -hmm. You didn't go down to the beach and pick up any of the cases that were thrown over in no. order to... <laughs> And that apparently was quite a lot of fun for some people, you know, yeah. because the policemen would chase the boats and they would throw the cases over so they would have no evidence and they'd wash up on the beach, you know. Well, great. I think they still do. Mm -hmm. I think it still goes on. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I th I'm sure it does. Mm -hmm. And especially over, I think, on the Jamestown side, mm -hmm. too. I think prohibition probably was not a good thing anywhere. It was maybe a good, good idea, but it caused a lot more problems than it solved. Oh, the, there was a lot of homebrew. <laughs> Did you know anybody who made homebrew in their houses? No, I don't think so. It was illegal to go out and buy it, yeah. but it wasn't illegal to have it in your home no. if you didn't sell it, and I guess a lot of people made it, but you didn't know anybody no, who did. No, I don't re recall right now. Was there, you said everybody went down to stock up the day it went into effect. Did everybody go down to buy it the first day it was repealed? Oh, that I don't know. You know I heard it story someplace about how people turned up at the post office with buckets, you know, the day <laughs> the day prohibition was repealed, they all went down to fill up. Of course, it didn't happen that fast. No, Did, uh, no, because the prohibition was in effect for quite a few years. And then when it was repealed, it took a while to get the supplies moving yeah. again. Did you ever use the Fall River Line? Oh, yes. You rode that to New York. Was, that was fun to do that. And uh, sometimes we would go up to Fall River and get on the New York boat there because it left from Fall River and came down to Long Wharf. And it would be at Long Wharf for a couple of hours loading on freight. There would be barrel after barrel of fish put on the boat. It just gave you a little extra ride. Yeah. And how did you get to Fall River? On the trolley. On the trolley. <laughs> that, on, that. The tr on the trolley or on the train. But. Mm -hmm. And then come back down. On the, I guess those were beautiful boats. Oh, they were. And they, you'd have your dinner mm -hmm. on the uh, boat. That's what we principally why we went up is to have the dinner and then... And then wake up in the morning in New York. Well, no, no, if we were going to New York, but we'd sometimes just go up to Fall River and come down on the boat to Newport and get off here. Now, that's what I've been trying to find out. I've asked people, several of them, if anybody did that, you know, just oh, had a sort of a many. short ride on it. Oh, and nobody many. has done it until you, because it seemed to me it would be a wonderful thing to oh, do. To just, you know, go out for dinner and take a short ride and come back. Everybody said, oh, no, you only rode it all the way to New York. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, that, that See, way. it came from Boston. Mm -hmm. And then it, uh, the uh, train, no, the boat didn't. The boat started at Fall River. But there would be a train from Boston that would come right down to Newport. And they'd get off there and get on the New York boat. Mm -hmm. They were, I guess, not only beautiful boats, but they were very well built, very safe, a lot of modern safety features like watertight compartments and that sort of thing. And I guess, of course, all that service was done in shops in Newport. Mm. And it must have been quite a blow when suddenly it wasn't oh, there I anymore. It was. Did you know anybody who lost their jobs um, when that line folded up? No, I don't. I don't think I was in Newport at that mm -hmm. time, but we
<laughs> so, um, of course, I think what I was going to say about that. No, I don't remember. I, I'm sure that I wasn't in Newport when it folded up. And most of the people that I know would be about ready to retire, I think. Mm -hmm. yes. So that economically, it didn't bother a lot of your friends. No. You and a lot of your friends. Of course, it hit just about the time of the Depression. So there was, it was a double whammy for jobs <laughs> in Newport. How about Newport in the Depression? Were you here then, during the Depression years? Well, I was. I came back here in uh, 62. Mm -hmm. So you would have lived through the Depression, mostly yeah, in Boston. Boston yeah. In Newport, apparently, you get conflicting stories. It just happens to depend on whether you lost your job or your father lost yes. his job. The torpedo station was still here. The Navy payroll was here. Oh, yes. And there was a basic income that stayed. Um, the mansions probably had trouble. Um, of course, all the big owners of the mansions lost money in the stock market, so they couldn't um, afford to staff them anymore. Oh no, that, oh, they, had, they employed so many people. And, uh, I guess it was, it was a real contribution to the town, the life yes. of those mansions. A great many of the people would, uh, especially the ones that were the caretakers, they'd have their own home in Newport. And in the summer, they uh, lived in their own homes. And in the winter, they would live in the mansions. And keep the mansions warm oh, and maintained. Yes. And then mm -hmm. see, watch to see that there was no break-ins. I guess, and maintaining the decorations of the mansions required a lot of skills that aren't there anymore. Either the murals and that one that has a whole silver wall, yeah. um, just the arts and crafts skills that are required to keep yes. them going. Yeah. It, jo uh, my uncle, Jonas Bergner, he was a woodcarver up at Vernon's on, I uh, can't think where their, their shop was, whether it was on Prospect Hill or John Street. And he did some of the carving in the elms. Oh, well that's, you know, that's the kind of skill. And I guess the Preservation Society does a pretty good job oh, with they do. trying to maintain them and find people who still have that sort of skill. It's, uh, and it employs a lot more people than you know, even they, now. They do a great preservation society. Some people don't give them credit. They don't think of what they're restoring those places and that's what brings a great many people to Newport. Mm -hmm. And it's, the, of course, you hear that they should pay their share of taxes or make an equivalent contribution or something. But, you know, they Why, they don't stop to think the money that they're putting in to renovate those places. And then, of course, they bring in, as you say, oh, tourist money. It's a whole cultural area that's very special. Well, we enjoy going around because we haven't the last few years because of illness, but otherwise we go and we take our friends. They're always glad to because we belong to Preservation Society, so we, we go free. We pay our dues. Have you ever been to any of the concerts or any of those oh, activities oh, out yes. in the mansions? We always used to go to those. They're very nice too. Oh, they're lovely. Gives you a and big... you know you'd be surprised how few Newporters would be there. Really? Summer colony people? No, mostly people from out of town would come for these concerts. Mm -hmm over from Little Compton and, and all around there. They'd come in Providence. They'd come down to the 
concerts. It's and then we got we attended a great many of the morning ones of the afternoons. I, I never did go to any of the evening ones. You know, it happens so many times you don't see your own town, your own city, unless you have a visitor and then you <laughs> go and do things in order to show them. But it's it's a wonderful activity for Newport to have yeah, it in is. the summer. Um, what about the jazz festival, since we're talking about <laughs> music? <laughs> I, I never attended the jazz. Yes, I guess I did. Sure, we did. We went to a few of them when they first started. Then after that, they, get, they got sort of rowdy. I guess they really did get pretty bad. Yeah. And they had to be stopped. Um, just more than the Newport oh, they, police could they handle. They, they, well, there were nice people came, but they brought an awful element. Yeah. Um, I heard that there was no place for all these youngsters to sleep, and they slept in people's yards and oh, on yes, the beach and everything. <laughs> and do you think and they, um, they came? They slept in their cars, <laughs> and I can remember one time going to. Uh, the 8 o'clock service at Trinity, and my sister and I thought, well, we'll go out to Howard Johnson's and have breakfast. We got out there, and we just, oh, we turned right around and went home. Without you, breakfast? Without breakfast. You had to. You couldn't get in. But we hadn't thought of that, mm -hmm. you know. We thought, well, we'll go out there. And right. to the creamery, too, and what you couldn't. Couldn't put foot in. I guess, of course, Newport, it's a colonial town. The streets are still laid out the way they were, and it just was never designed to accommodate that many people. I guess, and although Newport got a reputation from the jazz festival. Yes. Oh, but when they had the riot, mm -hmm. yeah, that was awful. Were you here? During that time, I happened to be here on the weekend, <laughs> and I was staying with my sister over on Hunter Avenue, and we had our cousins arrive from Sweden. They were going up to uh, Rochester, New York, to visit their son, who was yeah. Stromberg Carlson went over to Sweden to get electrical engineers, and my cousin said he would come, but he wanted to bring his wife and daughter. And they said, well, then you'll have to sign up to stay for three years. So he did. Well, then, at the time of the riot, his mother and father came from Sweden to visit him, and so they stayed in town, and we went out to Portsmouth to the summer camp, so we didn't hear it, but oh, they said it was dreadful. <laughs> that must have been quite a reception for yeah. <laughs> the people from Sweden who signed up for three years, and this is what they agreed with. Yeah. They must have wondered what they had come to. Yeah. <laughs> then um, you said the morning of the hurricane, she was actually in swimming. Oh yes, there. yeah. Oh, she was. But it's just, it was. She said it was strange that the tide brought them up towards the cliff, <laughs> which was not its normal current. No. But she, but she didn't. They didn't think anything about it. But then, in the afternoon when it started, in fact, she was living here then, not on this side, but on the other side. And uh, it was blowing, and Mother had some company here. So I think she took them home. And my other sister was out at St. George's School. She was secretary there. And they had to stay. For they did, she didn't come home until after 7 o'clock. 
I guess that was the danger. She was wise to stay because that's oh, yes. where well, all they, the... Uh, you see, the, they had uh, a man that used to drive them out to the school and then he'd drive them back at night. And so they just had to stay the fish. That was a low area where when the tide came over, that's where the loss of life was, yes. I guess, on that road. Of course, I think St. George's is up quite high. Mm -hmm. It seems to me it is. Well, I think it's up there on the hill, yes. Yes, she was it is. all right as long yeah, as she was there. there. But if she had tried to come back... Oh, well, she couldn't, you see, because... Remember was, that, just, that beach road would have been oh. impassable. Well, the, the beach, all the bathhouses and things were swept right across. Into the pond on the other the side. Into the pond on the other side. It must have been quite an experience, because it was so unforeseen. Mm. They didn't have the weather forecasting devices. Oh, nobody, no. nobody knew it was coming. Well, because uh, I was in Boston then, and uh, oh, I tried to call home the next day and all that. I couldn't get them. <laughs> oh, I was so glad when I finally did. No word from anybody, I no. guess. And it was the most beautiful day the next day. I have heard that. Just oh, clear. Next day. <laughs> very sudden, very abrupt, very violent, and then all over. Well, we, another time, I've forgotten which one of the hurricanes it was, and uh, we were out in the country at their country place, and Oh, I don't know. It was after midnight. The police came, and they told us they wanted us to leave. And my Edith's husband said, oh, can't we stay? No. He says, it's at your own risk if you do. So where so did you go? Came back to Newport. <laughs> I guess people are going to believe from now on when they're told oh, that it's yeah. dangerous to leave. Well, then leave. Uh, I went back the next morning. I, I went back, and the, it was the last bus that left that day. You were lucky. Yes. <laughs> and uh, cleaning up the mess then... I wonder, did you have any feeling that Newport did a good job or could have done better cleaning up afterwards? No, I think they really did a very good job. Mm -hmm. so much I know the next day after the 30, not the 38 hurricane, but another one we had, because we had uh, electricity. The people on this side of the house had gas. And I thought I was out washing the windows, <laughs> and I could smell the coffee. <laughs> they were cooking with gas and the electricity. Yeah. No, no electricity. No electricity. No yeah, coffee. We, were, we, were, we didn't have an elect. Yes, we had an electric refrigerator, but of course it wasn't working. So you went down to the wharf. You took a dishpan or whatever you had, and you could buy a big piece of ice <laughs> he came home and put that in the refrigerator but that's keep... heavy to carry oh well what we uh, they put it out in the car for you oh, mm -hmm. oh you couldn't carry it <laughs> it's not like back in the colonial days when you had to carry water from the spring <laughs> I can visualize the three of you carrying a bucket of ice yeah. on each side home from the, from the Long War. I don't know whether you know Dr. Levine or not. Yes. yes. Well, he, ha he has one of those old-fashioned refrigerators in his waiting room, and it's full of children's toys. Oh, no, the first time I went, I was... I was wondering what was in there, so there was nobody around once, so I just opened the door to look. <laughs> oh my, when the children come in, they go right for it. They, they know, know where it's, they know it's there. <laughs> yeah, what he has in there for them. It's a wonderful idea. I have a friend who used to keep toys in her oven. 
Yeah. So that when she was working in the kitchen, you know, the children's toys were in the oven and they weren't in the way, and the kitchen was more or less orderly. Yeah. But I you know I have sat in Dr. Levine's office and never had any idea there were oh, children's well, toys in there. Sure. <laughs> I look myself the next time I go. <laughs> You had come back to Newport, hadn't you, at the time the Navy pulled out? Or were you here? Yes. What do you think that has done to Newport? Was that a good thing or a bad thing, generally? Well, of course, they thought it was a very bad thing, yes. But uh, I think that they have survived very well. Of course, the... It has brought the tourists yes, in, brought the and tourists in. In. instead of the Navy income, instead of the and Navy. And they used to blame a lot of the things on the sailor boys, mm -hmm. but I think they found out that things went on just the same, and it wasn't because of the sailor boys. That Thames Street was not Flood Alley just because of the sailors. No. No, uh, the... Uh, they got a higher class of men after the First World War mm -hmm. that enlisted in the Navy. Well, of course, the War College has a very high caliber oh, of person. Yes. And it was the ships that left and the enlisted men, who sailors, who manned the ships mm -hmm. that was the personnel that left. So actually, I guess the general quality of the Navy presence here is better than it was before. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, it would be hard to find Newport without the Navy at oh, all. It's oh, been such... It certainly would. Uh, and if a person is ambitious, they have a chance to work their way up. <coughs> all sorts of various opportunities yes. in the Navy. But I think so. I think it's a very... Well, I think in all lines of service, both, both the Army is the same. With all your nieces and nephews, um, do you have anybody in any of the branch of the services no. now? No. It, you see, it might they have been... They were in during the war, mm -hmm. but, but they're not in there now. Mm -hmm. In such a Navy-oriented town, it would seem, you know, that somebody might have been enticed into that kind of a career. But you uh, managed to have lived on the fringes of it without yeah. being <laughs> drawn in. Um, the other thing that's made a big difference in the general pattern of life and living in Newport is the bridge oh. um, <laughs> instead of the ferry. How do you feel about that? Do you think that's a good thing? Did you like uh, it better before? Well, I don't know because with the tourist, tourism here, why the, it, it's very good to have the uh, bridge. And before that, you'd if you came over, you'd come from New York sometimes, and uh, you'd come over on uh, two ferries from Saunderstown to Jamestown. Then from Jamestown, you'd come to Newport. And if you missed the ferry, you might have to wait. Oh probably two or three ferries before you could get on with all the cars in the summertime that were coming over. So it wasn't a case of just having to wait for the next ferry. You sometimes had to, to wait, wait two, two or, or three. three in order oh, to get yes. on. Did you ever miss the last one and have to drive all the way around? <laughs> no. <laughs> I guess that um, could have been a real problem because it's a long way to go all the way around oh, through sure Providence. It is. I was talking to somebody the other day who said um, that she had fought the bridge, but that was the beginning of the end. She lives in the point section, and oh, of course, yeah. they had visions of everybody being dumped into their area, 
And she said, that was the kiss of death. That was the end of Newport when they built the bridge. <laughs> I guess you don't feel that strongly about oh, it. Oh, no. I, I don't think so. But. Did you have a, fairy, <clears throat> a favorite fairy or a favorite fairy man that you no, liked? No, I don't <laughs> think I went over it. That too often. I was I was down at uh, Government Landing when the last ferry came over. Was there a lot of ceremony about that, or was it kind of tearful? No, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. This was the last. Of the uh, ferry. Came o uh, came over to Newport and then went back to Jamestown. No. Yeah. That we were it. down to see it. Did they, what happened to those fairies when they put them out of service? Did they break them up? Did they sell souvenirs no, from them? No, I, I think that there are a couple of them still around. Used, being used, used in different routes, different yes. areas. And then uh, I think they had made sort of a restaurant of one. I'm not too sure about that now, but I know it was over at... Uh, I'll ask Edith. Edith. I know they sold souvenirs from the Fall River boat. Yes. Uh, and I've talked to some people who would have loved to buy something and didn't have enough money at yeah. that point. But it would have been interesting to have something. They evidently didn't do that with the fairies. Not that I recall. Of course, they weren't that lavish. There wouldn't no. Oh, no. <laughs> have been that much of interest to buy from the ferry. No, and the New York boats were sold. Mm -hmm. Of course, they were very nice. What about the cup races, the America's Cup races? Did you ever go out and watch any of those? Oh, well, I went over at Castle Hill and around, and... Uh, that was much more interesting to watch them going out, and then we'd also go over there and watch them come back. Do you think Newport's going to miss them? Oh, I think they will. I wonder. I have a little feeling that maybe, just like the jazz festival, it got to be a little bit more than Newport could handle. Oh, I think so. And I, I think some of the Newporters were greedy, too greedy, charging outrageous prices. Almost as if they knew that this was the last <laughs> summer they could make a killing. Well, I, I think for the last few summers. I know it isn't only the America's Cup with various of our friends who have boats, sailboats that come in, yeah. and the Dockage is charged according to the per foot of the boat, and everything goes up and up and up. Um, I wonder if they're going to kill the goose that's laid the golden egg. I, I'm afraid they are. Pretty soon they'll find some place else to go. And I don't blame them. Well, I won't blame them either. Um, no, I don't blame them. You just wonder. It's it's normal to charge a little bit more, but to hold oh, such outrageous prices that they would charge. It's too bad that people are sort of short-sighted yeah. like that. Grab a nickel while you yeah. can, because that <laughs> may be the last. Um, I would, it, it's one more thing that's too bad. It gave Newport a lot of color and charm, yeah. but I think they'll find other activities. And oh, I, I'm sure they will. And I had a feeling last summer that it was just too much. Yeah. You know, the town couldn't handle it. No, I, we still have our lovely seashore mm -hmm. and all that bring people here. The climate. Yes. All the various cultural interests. And of course a lot of other races too. The America's Cup was only every three or four years anyway. It was yes. every year. And then there's the Bermuda race. 
That will be this summer again. Yes. One year it starts here, and then the next year it starts over in Bermuda. And that was interesting to go down and, and see them getting ready to go off and putting all the food and different things on the boat. I know sometimes you wonder, you see all these cases piled up on the dock, you wonder where they're ever going to put it in these little boats. But it's, as we were saying last time, I think, any kind of dock waterfront activity, there's this, an excitement about it, whether it's a commercial fishing boat or these racing yachts or just pleasure craft, it's... Uh, it's fun on the waterfront. Yeah. And there was a Max seafood place. We always went down there and, and bought fresh fish. And it was fun to watch the, some of the employees uh, opening up the crabs and the lobsters. And oh, how quickly they work. I guess you get used to it and you have to work fast. Oh, yes. Um, you've been here now since the redevelopment started that really yes. has changed the face of Newport. Oh, yes, it has. Do you think that's been for the better or not? Well, I think that the redevelopment's all right to a certain point, but I don't like what they're doing over on the drive along there with all those houses and things. but. Now on Broadway, they're redeveloping that. That's across from City Hall and that. That, and that municipal was, housing, low rent housing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have been in a couple of those, and I understand they're very nice, yeah. but they're going to have to be taken care of. You know, the people who live in them are yeah. going to have to take care of them. And I think it's a little too soon to know whether they are or not. No, they, I've been in several, I haven't been in the new one now that's on Broadway. There's two of them there. And, uh, but I have been in several apartments over at the high rise. Mm -hmm. And they're really very nice. Mm -hmm. But then there's a Chapel Street that's lower grade. Of course, out at um, Park Home oh, and some of those places. Awful. That is terrible. It really is bad. And I and just... At, at Tammany Hill, mm -hmm. that used to be a lovely place. And you could go and have picnics there. We'd walk out there. And you'd build your fire and all, and it was so nice, but I wouldn't dare go out there. You anymore. couldn't. It wouldn't be pretty, even if you dared, it wouldn't be a pretty place no. to go anymore. Now that's the sort of thing that I just worry a little bit may happen to some of the newer municipal places. Oh, I hope yeah, not. I, I hope, hope not. Mm. I hope they're careful enough about who they give yeah. these places to, to we keep had, them. We had a uh, black woman who came here to work mm -hmm. for us, and uh, she was living out there, and her husband was connected some way with them, doing something on her, but she wanted to get out of there, and she finally did. She said she didn't want her children brought up in that environment. Well, I think this is true, and it's very difficult to screen the people when you have a low-cost housing. There are some people who are so deserving of a nice place to live, oh, yes. and there are other people who you know, just couldn't care how it doesn't belong to them, so let's you know, tear it apart. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's awful, really, to see them. Um, just sort of generally speaking, all over. Have you enjoyed your years in Newport? Yes, I, I have. Uh, 
been a nice city to be nice. connected and of with. Course, I'm, I'm losing more and more of my friends because mm -hmm. we're in that age mm -hmm. bracket. That happens. Sure. But um, is there anything that really worries you having seen it over this long period of years now about the direction things are going? If a fairy godmother gave you three wishes and said, <laughs> you, could, you could direct the future of Newport, um, what would you oh, want to change? Oh, I don't know really what I would do about it. But um, I think it should be policed more and it should be cleaned up. It is awful. You know, I, uh, my brother-in-law drove me to church yesterday, and he goes to St. Joseph's, imagine, he was a Maine Baptist, and he's turned Roman Catholic. Well, he's that right in on, is it? Yes. Go on from there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh. I wish you could have seen Church Street. It was terrible, the trash on it. And I couldn't figure out, it looked like thin paper about this square. And it looked as though there was a design cut out in it. But I couldn't imagine what they'd used it for. Just trash on the street? Well, it was on the street, it was just loaded, and then I got down to Division Street, and uh, this car was pulled right up onto the sidewalk, corner of Division and Church. And I said, oh, who's, whose car is this? And he had a Colorado license plate on it. He says, oh, it's mine. And uh, so I had to step out into the street. I couldn't couldn't get by on the sidewalk at all. No, I couldn't get by on the sidewalk. And well, I said, where did all this trash come from? He says, that's what I'd like to know. Did you hear that when Michael Burns was the sexton at yeah. Trinity, he used to sometimes pick up 200 beer cans in the churchyard before the 8 o'clock oh, service, sure. Sunday mornings. Of course, it's the morning after Saturday night. Yeah. And they would come up there and just throw the beer cans all over the place. It doesn't make any difference what neighborhood you're in. Mm -hmm. It would be the same. He And uh, he said, I suppose I could, you know, clean it up, but it, it'll be just back again. And I said, oh, where do you live? He says, right here <laughs> in the house on the corner of Division and Church. The church. Yes, it was the Lee Homestead, L-E-E. -E. Well, he would know. Every day, every hour of the day, this little litter comes. Um, oh, my sister and I, when we lived off of Hunter Avenue, we used to take a bag, we'd go out walking, and we'd pick them up, pick up bottles and all sorts of things. Just to get Just them off, get them off the street. street, so that they wouldn't break them. I wonder if a bottle bill would help that situation. If they, you could get a nickel or so. Well, I don't know. Cleaning Sometimes it up. we brought some bottles back mm -hmm. to this little store on Hope Street there, and we would bring bottles mm -hmm. in, and oh, we said we don't want any money, because <laughs> I suppose she got some when mm -hmm. she probably returned mm -hmm. them. My husband has an interesting theory that if they were required to put beer only in cans, we're not allowed to use it in bottles at all, yeah. half the litter would be cleaned up because a can doesn't make any noise when you throw it out the car window. Yeah. A bottle makes such a lovely sound when it smashes. Yeah. <laughs> this is why they throw bottles out the window and they wouldn't throw cans so much. I don't know. That's I don't know. an idea. Sure. But it is a mess. I, oh, I agree with yeah. you about policing the streets more. Oh, they should. Mm -hmm. well, I, I sometimes pick up the, I go out here and pick up and sweep. 
that my nephew gets furious with me. He says, the idea, he says, you've got a heart condition and you're out there. <laughs> Cleaning up the trash after yeah. the other people. I guess it's a problem anywhere. Yes. No um, except somehow or other, in Europe, you don't see it. No. The public parks are clean. There aren't scraps of paper all over the place. There just isn't litter. And I don't understand the difference. There seems to be a pride in public property that we've lost. If it's public, it, you know. Well, now, Turo Park mm -hmm. and Eisenhower Park used to be called a parade. Mm -hmm. uh, that used to be lovely when I was growing up. It, isn't really wrong. Well, if this fairy godmother gives you three wishes, we'll take one of them to solve the problem of litter. <laughs> we'll we'll have her work on the, what to do about the littered streets. Other and otherwise, New, Newport's just going to go forward. Great. Okay. I hope it will.